guys. Welcome to Rock Talks. Today we are talking to Tim Ripper Owens, singer of KK's Priest. We discuss the new album Sermons of the Sinner, his time performing with Judas Priest, the exit of drummer Les Binks, and how he feels about the movie Rockstar, which was inspired on his life. If you like this interview, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and share the video with all your friends. Also, very important, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Hello, Tim. How are you, man? Thank you so much for your I'm time. Welcome to Rock Talks. Yeah, good to be here, buddy. Good to be here. All right, so let's start with this interview. I already got the chance to listen to the full new album by KK's Priest. And in my opinion, it sounds it's it has those classic, classic Judas Priest elements, of course, KK's guitar playing and your your great voice. But at the same time, this new album sounds current, sounds modern. So it's kind of like, like a mix of both worlds, you know, he, traditional heavy metal and with the sound with the with the, uh, the producing of, uh, of current metal. Uh, do you agree about this? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think it's great because it it just sounds like heavy metal to me. You know, I think it really has just a a, a classic metal sound. But um, you know, you have to add. I wouldn't say you know. I guess modern classic metal, right? I mean, I guess it has a little uh, little things here and there. But it's just to me, it's just a good heavy metal record. Um, You know, I, I think Ken just sat down and wrote what he, how he writes, you know, whatever came to him, but that's how he writes, you know, and uh, I think the big thing is bringing in um, the guys we brought in with AJ and, and, and Sean and, uh, you know, it really, uh, it really added, uh, you know, you get the young fellows in there and, uh, You know, just it just makes it, you know, and it, you know, Tony's bass playing and production's great. You know, it's nice to hear the bass on the on the album too. You know, there's yeah. a lot of great bass lines, so it's nice yeah. to hear it. Sounds powerful with the bass. Right yeah. Yeah. Right. So how would you how would you describe the chemistry with, with KK uh, on the studio while making this this album? Well, it's great. I mean, you know, we're friends and um Uh, as I am with all the Judas Priest guys, but, but, you know, uh, I, you know, we've always got along so well. So, you know, just getting him and I just getting together is just, you know, easy, you know, you just kind of get together and do it. It's not even like we've been apart. Uh, it's, you know, he knows that I'm easy to work with and he's easy to work with. And, you know, and I think the big thing that helps is he's known Tony for a bit now And AJ and, and KK go back quite a ways. AJ was <clears throat> in a band hostile that, that Ken was working with and helping out. And, uh, and then I'm good friends with Sean because he's the drummer of the three, the three Tremors, which has a new record coming out now as well. And so I think it's a, it's a great, we all get along well. And, and you know, KK and I just, it's, it's old stuff. You know, you show up to the studio, you, you sing a song, you have some tea, you sing another one and, make another mm -hmm. cup of tea and wait and then you wait till the end of the day so you can have a, a beer <laughs> great so you already put out uh, four music videos for this new album correct yes do you plan to to record more more videos well i think it would be good to to do another you know i li i really like the lyric videos now i really you know i think it's a great thing like the, the return of the sentinel video is great You know, uh, Three Trimmers just released a fantastic uh, lyric video as well. So I, I, you know, I remember telling Ken, we should do a lyric video. And he's like, ah, I don't know, you know, because, you know, when you're old school like us, sometimes you don't, you're not sure. But I think they're, they're a great way to put things out. And so I, I don't know what, what kind of video we'll put out next. Um, but I don't see what, why not put another lyric video out. Mm -hmm. All right. You already said some things about the input of the new members, um, but what about as well the, the chemistry with the whole band? Is, is it, is it uh, that great? Well, it is as of now. I mean, with COVID, we haven't been able to get together that much, have we? I mean, it's been really, uh, 
we got together to shoot uh, Raise Your Fists and Brothers of the Road video yeah. um, in July or whatever it was. So, you know, we haven't we haven't had that that time, you know, fortunately for me, I've been around all of them now. Uh, and I could vouch for Sean being easy going. I mean, he's a, he's a professional behind the kit. Um, but you know, it's, there's not even a doubt that, that there'll be a great chemistry on stage. I played with, uh, obviously with Ken forever. And I, and I jam with, with AJ at that show, November in November of 2019. But there's definitely the, the, when we were together shooting a video, you know, you could tell chemistry by just shooting the video. When, if you're shooting it live and doing it over and over again, when we were on stage, right when we did it, I mean, we went through the songs 30, 40, 50 times each. I mean, it was crazy, right? So, uh, but you go over and over again, you're performing it live and uh, act like, you know, and, and I'm singing, I'm actually really singing and the drummer's really playing. And um, you could tell we felt like right at home, like it was like we've been doing that forever, which we have been doing it. Listen, if you're a professional, you know, there's always chemistry at the beginning. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, every band thinks they have chemistry at the beginning. We'll see what happens years down the road, but uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic right now. So we're all looking forward to getting together and we're looking at the schedule now to see when we can get together and, and just jam. Mm -hmm. Are there any tour uh, planning for this year or maybe next year already? There's nothing planned at all right now. I mean, the, the agents are looking at it, uh, management and the agents. And uh, but as of now, there isn't any anything on the books. Uh, you know, it's a big undertaking, really. It's not like if I go tour solo or the three trimmers tour, it's a smaller club kind of things that you do. This is, you know, we're not going on small stages, only big stages big shows so it's it's a lot to go through a, a, a good process a lot of the shows that are out there now are shows that were already put together before covid and now they're just coming back and doing them you know so it's a lot harder uh to just and i know i'm always frustrated because i want to play i make a living doing music so i keep saying to them hey when are we i mean are we going to tour and they're always like you know hold on you know we're trying so as of now there isn't anything All right. So nothing in the books as right now. Well, as far as I know, there could be something that they're cooking up, you know, but they're not going to say anything until things happen. But but we don't I haven't been told of anything at all, you know, uh, this year or next year yet. All right. So hopefully next year we, we get to, to see this great band live. Finally. <laughs> Well, that's the plan. And it is a band. I mean, it's not a project. It's a band. And the whole point of doing this was to get out there and, and, and tour the world. All right. So uh, why did the Les Binks uh, left the band? What happened? There? Uh, you know, he, he was he was the, that was the plan. Les was going to do it. And I went to do my vocals. And right when I got there, uh, KK said, man, Les hurt his wrist. Uh, he's not going to be able to do it. And, uh, you know, and that's we had to make a decision on uh, being ready because we were going to be touring right away when we put the record out. So we had to just, you know, is it is it the right move? We need to be a strong band all the time when we tour. And now Les has got this this injury. So we talked with Les and we decided, yeah, let's we need to make the record. And tour. And then Les can come out and do some special show. I mean, Les is a fantastic guy. Um, you know, the touring takes a lot out of you, and you mm. got to be you got to be 100 healthy all the time, really, physically and, and mentally as well. Yeah. So we just thought we got to be ready to be strong. And I see I'm the one who suggested Sean. They had some other guys, and I said, and this happened like this. I mean, I'm doing my drums or I'm doing my vocals, and drums had to be done right after this. This was March of 2000. 20 and i said you know my drummer in three trimmers sean is a fantastic drummer professional great great look if you watch cage or or uh three trimmers you could tell that this this guy is is on top of it so you know we went and got the same the style we needed and uh you know get less out at some special guests at some shows it'll be it'll be really awesome so we can expect uh, less on drums on some particular shows in the future as a special guest 
Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's what that's what KK said. And I think Les has, has said. And, you know, we do some festivals. We do some of where it's feasible to bring him out. You know, there's nothing like uh, Les playing, you know, help Hellbent for Leather or or Running Wild. I mean, when you hear him playing, it's just like uh, it's fantastic, you know. So uh, it'd be nice to get him out there for some shows. All right. Just a second, please. All right. Uh, when you uh, will be out on tour, hopefully next year, uh, do you also plan to play some Judas Priest classics live? I think we will, but I think we'll pick and choose. You know, the main thing, it's funny because at the start, people's like, oh, that's all they're going to play. Well, then we released the record before we did anything. So the main thing about KK's Priest is it, is, is it isn't Judas Priest. There is a Judas Priest. This is KK's Priest. But we'll definitely pick something. The main thing is to play the songs off Sermons at the Center. But I think, um, I think, well, I would like to play, uh, you know, something from like rock and roll that there, uh, there's the one song, um, oh, I can't remember off the, my head now, that, that KK and Al Atkins wrote together. Man, I can't remember what it is. Well, it's really old. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's on it's on Rockerola. It's a couple ones, but uh, you know, it'd be fun to do things like that. Some some, some obscure, obscure songs that even Judas Priest yeah. didn't play. I time. mean, we when we played the, the, the November twentieth show that time with David Ellison and and Les on drums and yeah. AJ, we played uh, Before the Dawn, which which KK said he doesn't think he's ever played Before the Dawn ever live. That was the first time. So you know, oh. yeah, it'd be nice to have Before the Dawn in the set list. You know. Um, like I said, uh, I can't, I can't believe I can't remember the name of that song. I have it in my head and I'm just like straight right there, but you know, it'd be great to, to do some things like that. Mm -hmm. And what about songs from Juggalator and Demolition? Oh, there's no doubt those will be in there. I mean, uh, Burning Hell will be in for sure. The songs that I know I would put in there for sure. One on one, Burning Hell, uh, Hell is Home would be great to do. I think Machine Man is a, is a great song, especially yeah. live, yeah, you know, so, great yeah, song. so, uh, you know, I've, I've played almost all those songs live in my, in my solo touring. Yeah. I did a UK tour where I played almost both records, I think, um, but, you know, it'll be nice to, uh, to do some of those songs for sure. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a, a long set, you know, classic U.S. Priest, Tim Reaper Owens, a priest and the new album as well. Yeah, I think you know it'll probably be heavy, heavy on the new record. You know, uh, be a be a lot of that. It depends also on if, if we're headlining, if we're a supporting act for for a big yeah. tour. You know, it all depends on what we're doing, how long the set is. But yeah, I think it'll we'll pick and choose well. You know, I don't really look. I look for it to. You know, the thing is. Uh, you would say, man, let's put a great set together. It's kind of like Judas Priest touring now. Uh, they, they've been, the last couple of years, they've been putting really awesome get sets together and touring, you know. Their set list has been really, really great. So uh, the fans will have a, out there of metal, will have two great sets out there, bands playing some great music. I think the main thing here is to play KK's Priest, you know, and that's what we're doing. And then if you throw in a, a, a really classic tune that's not been played a ton you know even there's even songs on i would like to do you know solar angels would be great to do from point of entry i mean just the songs uh great so it'll, it'll be it'll be fun to try and put a get a set list together yeah maybe at least five or six songs from the new album right i would think so yeah i would think i don't think there's any doubt about it because the main thing that we're doing is we're trying to push this band right i mean you got you to gotta play songs that uh, KK's written in the past and his history and songs from my history from, from that. But you, uh, you've got to push. This is, a, this is a new band, you know, and we got to push this record. Yeah, exactly. Well, it sounds really great. I can't wait to see that live because uh, sadly, you just priests don't play songs from your era, which makes sense in a way. Would be nice if they do that but here is kk's priest to do that live final so i'm sure fans yeah are really looking forward to it i don't think it i actually don't think it makes sense that they don't play songs from my ear i mean it was judas priest <laughs>
listen, if you're celebrating 50 years of Judas Priest, but you're leaving out 10 years of it, you can yeah. at least put in burning. I mean, the thing is, Rob would sound so awesome. Could you imagine Rob singing Burning Hell? I mean, holy crap, it would sound fantastic. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with, with sticking in uh, Burning Hell in, in a set list, you know. Um, it was right in the middle there, so, you know, I don't know. But it's uh, they have a great set list they're playing right now, so it's pretty awesome to, to, to see them. Yeah, I, I agree with you. That's why I said, in a way, I kind of I kinda get it. Yeah. Because uh, some other bands like Anthrax uh, did the same thing, you know, they were celebrating 40 years of, uh, of being a band and they put out this uh, special streaming live event and everybody was hoping to see some John Bush era songs with John or at least with Joey Valadonna singing those songs from the 90s. But they didn't, they didn't play any of those songs. And it was like, how is this, how is this a celebration of four years if you are, if you yeah. are over like 13 now, years out? I was fortunate enough to see Anthrax on tour and, they actually, and Joey actually sang John Bush songs. So a couple songs. So it was pretty cool to watch him do it. But, uh, you know, it's their choice. They can do it. Uh, they don't want to do it ever it's amazing they've never Judas Priest has never done it. They don't always have to do it, but it's amazing that they've never done it. I mean, Rob's never heard. Uh, yeah, um, sure. Rob's never. Rob supposedly he's never heard my era Judas Priest, and it's kind of all right because I've never actually listened to his solo stuff except Fight. So we're kind of even on it. <laughs> after Fight, I've after Fight, I've I've not really listened to his stuff either. So it's kind it's of all draw. right. It's but a draw for you. Guys. It's a draw. <laughs> Well, some other musicians say that, for example, I get the chance to interview Max Cavalera like uh, two times in the past, and he said the same thing, you know, I, I didn't even listen to the Sepultura records with Igor on drums before, uh, after I left uh, Sepultura, and I was like, well, wow, really? <laughs> listen, but I have listened to Judas Priest. I loved Firepower. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. So it's not that I haven't, I just... When I was in Judas Priest, I didn't listen to a lot of stuff, so I really didn't listen to the Halford stuff uh, unless somebody had it on somewhere. Uh, I love Rob. Rob is uh, a friend and and a and a mentor and an idol. So I, you know, I uh, uh, Rob Halford, Ronnie James Dio are the two guys that really uh, uh, inspired me. You know, so uh, it, it's nothing against anything really you just don't sometimes like rob just didn't it's not that i didn't want to i just never did you know what i mean it's kind of like i'm in yeah. judas priest there's no need so but i but after i left i i uh i listened to the judas priest records yeah. whether i liked them or not i listened to them <laughs> it's all good no drama here all right so uh, you already said that KK's Priest, it's a, uh, a band, it's not a project. So it's gonna be a full throttle from now on with KK's Priest. So my, my question is, how long would you guys plan to do this band? And I'm asking this because KK's is 69 years old. Yeah, well, I mean, as, as long as we can or want to, I mean, I'll tell you, he's, he's awful healthy and, and ready to rock i mean so uh you know you just do it i mean i do a lot of other things i can't afford to just to just sit back and do kk's priest unless they were touring all year long and paying me so i got to do a lot of things three trimmers uh i just got done signing uh i'm signing records cds right now for leviathan project that i did i'm getting ready to sign for for uh pyramid but when it comes to being available for everything kk's priest is the number one thing i'm available for so if they say you cannot do anything from january to january we your orders <laughs> i am theirs you know because i am 100 in and we'll do it as long as we can you know but on my off time when i'm allowed to do something i have to work 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 on other stuff to to make a living but man i am all for it. i love the record i love ken and the guys so i'm I'm 100% in, so whenever they need me to do something and they have, I have to be ready, they get, they get the, they get all of me. Yeah, yeah, it's your priority. That's great. So now, you, listen, I'm not getting, 
I'm not getting any younger either. So <laughs> <laughs> how, how old are you, man? Uh, 54. Oh, you look younger. You're a kid. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm a kid. <laughs> All right. So you actually are already working on the second studio album, right? You, I think you said that you, you are planning to release this second record for next year. Well, he's he's been doodling on some things, but I think once we get done with the promo run here, um, you know, it's hard now because daily, especially KK, he is working on um, uh, music, you know, uh, or work, you know, he's working on interviews for for this record. So he's really busy, but he's definitely put some ideas down. And I think once the press run slows down, probably coming up here in the winter we'll, we'll he'll he'll probably be writing a lot more and sending me more and we'll get together and start recording again i mean if we're not going to sit back and wait when the new year stop starts to uh tour we'll probably record in the meantime and start working on things all right um what about your solo stuff uh do you plan to release a second solo album? Because it's it's been like 12 years, years I think, right? Since the first one. And yeah. The yeah, it's been a while, you know, but I've released, I've released other stuff. I mean, releasing a new Revenge, you know, this will be the second three Tremors record that's coming out. The new record's uh, fantastic. Um, you know, a new Revenge, Spirits of Fire, uh, just so much stuff that I've done. A New Revenge I wrote, which I love A New Revenge. It's one of my favorites I've done. Uh, and then I just wrote, I did a Pyramid record. But now, I, I, as I'm writing, as I'm recording this for this, for Pyramid, he started sending me more stuff. So I wrote a, a second record with him. It was kind of funny as I'm sitting here. But I, I think I'll definitely do another solo record. I'll probably do it, another New Revenge record first. But uh, I definitely need to write, you know, I have some material already. Uh, for a new solo record so i just need to write some more and but i need to, to get in the studio and record it all right um what about beyond fear some people on youtube and social media are still talking about that project and in my opinion it's one of your best uh, works through your whole discography i mean that album back in 06 it was like this is great this sounds like Tim Ripper Owens meets Lamb of God. <laughs> it was really yeah, fun. Yeah, I, I loved it. It was the first record that I wrote half, I wrote half the music, the guitars and stuff for that record. It was the first time I've ever done anything like that. The good songs are written by John Capri though, but uh, <laughs> I, 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 uh, I would love to do it. I think probably what'll happen is when I do a solo record, I'll probably mix those two together. It might, maybe it'll be Tim Ripper Owens, Beyond Fear. That way it's kind of like, there's no need for a solo record and Beyond Fear when basically I'm writing Beyond Fear like a solo record, you know? So yeah. I may incorporate Ripper Owens Beyond Fear, get the guys. We actually had, I was working on the other day, some songs that we were going to do. Uh, but I really think now we just need to, because we've, you know, it's hard to do a band like that. I know people loved it. They got great reviews, but, you know, financially I have to be able to, to uh, have backing and be able to do a record, you know? I mean, it's, I'm not a young kid anymore to be able to just do a record for fun. Mm -hmm. Not that I don't do it for fun, but I'm going to have to pay the bills. I can't just sit there and, uh, and do it, but we, we should do it. I love one of my favorite records was beyond fear mm -hmm. uh, because it's just straightforward metal. Oh yeah. Really, really heavy <clears throat> and catchy at the same time. So yeah. let's, uh, the next question. Uh, it's been already 20 years of the movie Rockstar. Where do you stand on the film nowadays? Well, I mean, I never liked it. Um, really, uh, it would, even that being said, it would have been nice to be paid from it a little bit. But, you know, they took they took they bought the rights to the New York Times article about me. They were going to make oh. a movie about my about me and uh Warner Brothers and Judas Priest really didn't like what they were doing because they they wouldn't let us have any kind of creativity. You know, they just wanted to uh, make the make everything how they wanted, and the band didn't like that, so they pulled away. And then the movie made it a little, you know, a little bit about me, and then made their own movie. It's cool that they wanted to, uh, 
you know, but uh, it'd be nice to have a real movie about me. That would be pretty good to, to show. <laughs> you know, you got to remember, this was a horrible time of heavy metal. This was the mid 90s when heavy metal was really in the toilet, you know. Uh, and Judas Priest wasn't playing shows like in the movie, even on the painkiller tour at the end. You know, they were playing small crowds. They made it look like it was 1985 in these arenas and sex, drugs and rock and roll. And it was like, no, it was it wasn't sex, drugs and rock and roll in, in, in the 90s. It was let's play the show. Let's go to a nice dinner. And uh, that there we go. <laughs> so you never saw a penny from from this film? No, no, I never did. And that's unfortunate. That's another. There are some things that that Judas Priest did in my in my time, turning down Ozfest. You know. Uh, oh really? What year? I don't. I can't. When I can't remember. Uh, we turned down Ozfest not definitely once, maybe two years in a row, because it was in August and. We, we just never did it. Uh, and then probably, uh, you know, totally going away from the movie. So we didn't make any money and they just still made the movie and made us look like buffoons anyways, you know. So uh, at least we probably would have looked a little better if, if we didn't piss them off. Okay, I'm back. I, I think that the movie was supposed to be called Metal God, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be called Metal Gods, uh, and we, we were supposed to have some music in it as well. So, I mean, it really would have, I don't think they would have put some of the things in the movie. For sure, I know it, because after we pulled away from it, the writer went on the road with some other bands to write a little bit of a new story. So he got some ideas. Instead of us, you know, getting ideas from Judas Priest, they decided to roll with Pantera. That's probably where they got the sex, drugs, and rock and roll from, Pantera <laughs> tour. <laughs> And tons of alcohol as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, too bad about the the Ozfest thing. I didn't know that because that lineup in Ozfest in late in late nineties or maybe in early two thousand would be great. Yeah, there's a couple things they turned down. I never quite could understand it. I felt like we missed a lot of opportunities, but uh, you know, I mean, you. You turn down stuff when we really needed it. It was it was kind of shocking to me, but you know that's just. Uh, I listened to the management. We had this great management with with Bill Kerbisley and and uh, Trinifold management, and you know you listen to it, you go with it, and uh, I learned a lot. I learned learned a lot from being in Judas Priest on actually mostly what to do and act, and obviously in things like that, not what not to do. Yeah, sure. Well, last question. We need to wrap this up. Uh, what is your best memory about touring and or recording with KK back in the late '90s and early 2000s? Well, being in Judas and Judas Priest, just I think just hanging with them in general. You know, we were good friends and a family. It was such a fun time. I mean, nominated for Grammy, I went to the Grammys. But I think the best part for me about being in Judas Priest was just hanging out. You know, going to the pub, having dinner, recording, just being together, hitting a golf course, whatever we were doing, we hung out as a family. Uh, I never had so much fun, and and uh, it was a great, great vibe. You know, they treated me great and became such friends, uh, something I always look back on. So I think just my whole experience was so positive, you know, um, it, that was the main thing. If you like this interview, Please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and share the video with all your friends. Also, very important, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell.